to episode two of A Yarn Tale. This is a knitting podcast. My name is Karen and I'm coming to you from Chicago where I live with my husband, our three kids, and our dog Max. If you are a new viewer checking out this video for the first time, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you came and took some time out. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back to see some more yarny goodness. So let's get right into it. I am wearing Anchor Summer Shirt by Petite Knit. I knit it out of the recommended yarn because this was only my second garment I'd ever knit. So I didn't know anything about yarn substitution. I didn't want to get into it. So I knit this out of Sandness Garn. It's their Lean or Lina. It's uh, cotton, hang on, 53% cotton, 33% rayon, and 14% linen. Uh, and when I was knitting it, it felt like a burlap sack. It was horrible. It was splitty. I didn't even know that yarn could be that splitty. Every time I did it, my needle would get half a half a strand or it would all separate at the plies. And um, it was really uneven and it looked kind of hideous. But I just kept going off of the beautiful photos. <laughs> And I kind of hoped that miraculously at the end, my garment would turn into something lovely. And actually, after I washed it, it was pretty great. It's top down, it's, um, so it's a seamless garment, knit from the top, and there's these slip stitch details all the way around. The front and the back are identical. There's no sort of short row shaping or anything like that. Um, I can only tell which side is the front because I did a really crap job weaving in one of my ends and so it makes this horrifying line straight across the back. Nice job. So I just put that in the back because <laughs> I figure if I can't see it, it's probably not even there. Um, what else can I say about this? It, so it does black out quite nicely even if um, it looks like a cat chewed on it while you're knitting it. So if you decide to take this up, don't give up. I don't know anything about knitting and I certainly didn't know anything about it when I started. And I think this held up really lovely. It, it's a good neutral. It's perfect for this time of year when it's just starting to be spring or um, kind of a transitional time when you want something but not really a giant mohair worsted sweater. Um, so that's what I'm wearing. I don't have any finished objects this time because my projects are all kind of larger. I have big shawls and a sweater and um, endless socks, which aren't large, but seem to take me an eternity. So to compensate, I thought since you haven't seen anything I've knit, I'd show you some of my, my, um, some of my older finish, finish objects. So this is something that I would consider as one of my most successful knits. These two are knit from the same pattern. They're the June Hat by Megan Kelly. This was released as the Kelborn Woolens Year of Hats. Um, the, they're free patterns. So if you're looking for a um, free pattern, the June Hat in particular is just awesome. It's knit out of worsted yarn. So this is Wicker Park Worsted by the Movers and Makers. I feel like every single thing I've showed on this podcast is knit out of the same yarn. I do buy other yarns, <laughs> um, but Movers and Makers is one of the yarns that I go to the most just because it's uh, kind of a really good solid or, or tonal. There's not a lot going on as far as speckles or variegation, which I love in principle, but I have a really hard time picturing myself wearing garments made out of really variegated yarn. It's just not something that, I don't know, it's just not something that I'm drawn to. I love it on other people. I just haven't quite gotten there myself. Okay, this is Wicker Park Worsted in Gold Star Blackout, that's the black, and Winter on Hoin is the ivory. And so I made this one first, which is my main color was the Gold Star Blackout. Um, the, the black isn't truly black, it's like a tonal, kind of very dark gray, some of it's light gray. Um, and then you actually purl, you, there's a one by one rib, is one by one and then you just purl all the way around with some artfully placed slip stitches that go all the way up the top so that's the crown cool now okay I wasn't gonna show you but in the interest of true transparency in my second hat 
Ah, uh, I slipped this stitch wrong or something. So there's like, it's messed up at the top. It's kind of how my whole, it's how my whole crafting life goes. It's like awesome, except for like that one bit. But you know what? It doesn't even matter. I knit both of these. I So I had one skein of the dark and one skein of the light. And I knit the first hat and there was so much left that I just um, knitted in the reverse. And I was able to get an entire second hat out of it and I have a decent amount left over. So um, really cool. This is um, just a really nice neutral like workhorse hat that I wore all through the winter. It's not flashy. I didn't even put a pom-pom on it. I just love it. Love it, love it, love the fit. Didn't swatch, didn't matter. Um, for some reason, the lighter one came out kind of smaller. It still fits, but it's like a little bit more snug. I don't know if I just didn't wear it as much and I didn't, my giant head didn't stretch it out. But either way, they're both great. Even my kids wear them, which it kind of hurts my heart when they wear them to school because I'm just so worried that they're gonna end up in some sad lost and found that I can't check because we can't go in with COVID. <laughs> so I'm always like, look, look for your winter wear. Um, this is the June hat by Megan Kelly, uh, through Kelborn Woolens, if you're up for it. So that was a long ago finished object that has really served me well. Um, and that, and that's it for finished objects. So let's just get to the whip parade. Some of these you've seen from last week or last time, not all of them though. So, so my main whip is my he show shawl by Olga Baraya Keflian. Last time I said Kefelian because if you look at her name and you just sound it out, that's what you get, Kefelian. Uh, that's what I got. But I watched a couple of podcasts and they all said Keflian. So either the whole internet is pronouncing it wrong or more likely I am pronouncing it wrong. So if anybody knows the true way to say Olga's name, she's Olga Jazzy Knits on Instagram and she's an amazing pattern designer. This is the He Show Shawl made excellent progress. I'm in the middle of the fifth repeat of seven, although the seventh one is abbreviated, so fingers crossed. It is um, really getting long now. The Each row is almost 700 stitches, so I'm not cruising through as fast as I had hoped. This is, I'm knitting as part of a knit along that's run by Michael from Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast, which is awesome. Uh, if you're looking for a cool podcast, check his out. But the the knit along was supposed to it started March 1st and it was supposed to run through April 9th. And I was like working so hard to hit the April 9th deadline, but it was pretty obvious to me that even though I really wasn't knitting on much of anything else, I just wasn't gonna get there. I am super slow. I didn't realize I was that slow of a knitter, but um, the time does not lie. I am not done yet. Uh, so, but the good news is, I watched his most recent episode of his podcast and I got an extension. The knit along now goes for two more weeks. It does not end until April 23rd. So um, it was a little bit sad how excited I was <laughs> that this knit along, this random non deadline that doesn't even matter for people that have never even met me and don't know that I'm even out there. Um, I was super excited to see that the knit along had been extended because now with two more weeks, I can definitely for sure finish this. I mean, I think I can finish it. I don't have that much more to go. I have just um, a couple more repeats to go. Look at this beautiful texture. So I talked about it in the first episode, but this is knit out of Wicker Park sock in the colorway Big Star. That's the yellow. Midnight in the Park is the navy. Smoke Daddy is the gray and Milk and Honey is the pink. And I just love it. I know I said I loved it before, but if possible, I love it even more. I even love that the rows are so long. It's just kind of this epic, I don't know, just forever and ever of knitting. It's not hard. I don't have to check the pattern anymore. I don't think I'm screwing it up. And I think it's gonna look great. So for this shawl, you switch colors every few rows or so. And when you switch, you don't carry your yarn up the side because um, that makes a little whoop, I don't know, which is the designer didn't want you to do that. So. You, you weave it in as you go and you trim it. But I've never woven in my ends as I go. 
So I did what they said, but it was only for four or five stitches. And then I just felt so weird trimming it super short because isn't it gonna come out? So I left a long tail and I just thought I would stress about it later and look at it and see if it's really gonna come out. Because the idea of this whole thing unraveling with ends everywhere just makes me really nervous. So I don't know, I'm gonna leave it. I don't think I can even weave these in though without it being super obvious. So maybe I'm just gonna have to trust the knitting gods that if I trim it, like she says, it won't be a horror story. I don't know, if anyone has any experience trimming ends or weaving in as you go, how many stitches do you weave in? Like I only did it, she only said to do it for four. But I was like four stitches, that's like none. So I did it for five. <laughs> because that's so different, right? Five is different than four. I don't know. But it just still seems like when I weave in my ends, I weave them in forever. I mean, it's so many stitches because I'm always like, well, I better just keep on going. Um, maybe I don't have to be doing that. I don't know. I'm kind of making this up as I go. So I might be totally wrong and maybe I could be able to weave in my ends super quick and I've just been prolonging the process unnecessarily. I do not know. Anyway, this is my Hisho shawl. It looks awesome. I mean, not right at this moment, <laughs> but generally. And I'm hoping to be done by the April 23rd deadline, which I think is imminently doable. Okay, next, I am working on my No Frills Sweater by Petite Knit. And I'm really glad that I brought this up in my first podcast because it inspired me to finish it. Well, I didn't finish it, but to work on it. So this is the front. And last time I talked about it, um, I had not picked up the stitches from the waist yarn to start the second sleep, but I did. So this is it so far. The sleeve is, I'd say about halfway done, which is great because I really only worked on it for a couple of days. So I think I might be able to knock this out by next time. Look at me saying like I'm going to finish all the things, but I think I really might. I know the first sleeve is really skinny um, or skinnier than I would have chosen if I were creating my own sweater pattern, which I have no idea how to do. <laughs> but if I were that kind of person, I would have made it slightly larger. Um, but I'm just gonna knit the second in the exact same way so that I have two identical sleeves. So I'm doing all these decreases and it kind of pains me because I know I'm making it skinny again but I don't think I'll really notice I think I can block it out um, and hopefully I'll have a finished grown-up sweater by the next time we talk um, if you missed it the first time around I knit it out of I knit it out of Phil Colana Anina in the colorway red 225 held double with um, Phil Colana Tilia that's 70% mohair, 30% silk in the colorway Peach Blossom. And together, they make this lovely marled color that I just cannot get enough of. So that is that. I don't have that much to say about it. It's going great. It's mostly stockinette, not, not super interesting vignette. Not very much trouble, so I have no complaints. So my next whip is, has a bit of a story. So in episode one, I showed one sock of the candles and coffee socks that were designed by Julia Pell of the Happy Knitting Podcast. And I was so excited that I'd finish one sock in time to be in the first half of March so that the full pair could be my March socks. I'm trying to do 12 pairs a month, 12, <laughs> haha, 12 pairs a month, 12 pairs a year. So they were gonna be my March socks and I bought a skein of self-striping yarn from Nomadic Yarns to be my April socks, but then, I was so excited about my April yarn that I didn't even cast on my first, my second sock <laughs> of the March socks. And I just went and cast on um, my April socks. It's just a vanilla sock. I am knitting it toe up out of Nomadic Yarns, trusty sock in the colorway Old Friend. And it is knitting up beautifully. There's bright pink and orange. It's like a pumpkin-y orange, mustard, and this beautiful tonal green, purple and brown. And I'm doing contrasting heels, toes, and hopefully cuffs in, yet again, Wicker Park sock in 
some kind of colorway for the pink. I don't remember what it's called. Well, if I find it, I will put it in the notes, which will be underneath the video. So this is just a vanilla sock. I actually got the pattern out of this field guide number 11 from Modern Daily Knitting, MDK, and it's all about socks. So I bought this at the beginning of the pandemic, sort of goes through the parts of a sock and the basic pattern for cuff down and toe up and various stitch patterns for all over patterns or just a front panel or what have you. So I was using their toe up recipe, which has worked great, but you guys, I tried this sock on. It's my first toe up, so I don't know. I have really small feet, like elf feet. I'm size five or five and a half. We're on a good day of six, but mostly a five. <laughs> and they're ginormous. I knit the smallest size and I should have tried it on sooner, but it didn't even occur to me. And then after I put the heel in, I was like, oh no, it's so big. So I don't know. I think I'm gonna rip it back. It like hurts me to say that out loud. Cause then I'm not for sure not gonna finish a sock in the time to stay on track for my 12 socks for the month, 12 socks in a year. Um, but they're really big. They're like probably this much too big. Like maybe not quite an inch, but maybe I didn't even measure it. So I think I'm just going to rip it back because the idea of actually completing a full pair of socks and then not being able to wear them is just, that's just wrong. And it doesn't take that long cause it's vanilla and I, it's a wrap and turn heel short row heel, which I've never tried. And one side looks really great. Hang on, maybe I can show. One side looks really good. It's like, oh, you're not gonna be able to see that. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, one side looks really good. Is this the good side? No, that is the bad side. One side looks good. It's like really even, it's not too, not too much going on. But then on the other side, it's a little janky. <laughs> Um, so the combination of the two big sack and the sort of messed up heel, I don't know, I had a really hard time telling where my wrap stitches were at first, which once I got into it, it was really not hard to see, but at the beginning, I just couldn't find them. So like, I think I went too far on some or too short on the others. I don't even know. It was very, it was late at night. I shouldn't be doing new things late at night, but I was doing it. And, um, so I think I'm just going to rip back and make it a little shorter and try the heel again. Also, there's this giant hole right there. Does anyone else get these giant holes? I don't get these holes when I do heel and heel flap and gusset. Here's one. Oh, look at that giant hole right there. Hello. That's terrible. So maybe I can do something about that. Um, so I'm of two minds about this sock. I do love the color. I think the yarn is great. It actually feels kind of sturdy. <laughs> Um, sturdier than I knit a pair of socks out of yak. It was like there was a bunch of yak in the yarn and it was really soft and squishy, but it really did not wear well. So I'm excited that maybe these will wear a little bit better, but in order to actually be able to wear them, I'm going to have to rip it back. So sad, but on a positive note for my birthday, my parents got me a gift card to Nina Chicago, which is my most favorite local yarn shop and I got myself a Swift, you guys. I have been hand winding my own yarn, just throwing it over the banister and sort of doing it that way um, for the last year since I started knitting and it worked, like it works. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's very slow and kind of labor intensive. So I got finally broke down and got myself a Swift. I got a Luca swift i think you say it luca the internet says you say it luca even though it looks like likey <laughs> but i think it's luca i got the mango wood wait maybe i have it. i think i have it here okay so it comes in this lovely bag luca doesn't look like luca to me but i got i'm not gonna set it up because one i'm not that good at setting it up i've only done it once um but at least you can see i got the mango wood which is the lighter finish um, but they also have a rosewood, which is darker, which is also, it's really lovely. And I had a hard time deciding, but it clamps to the table. It's fully wood. So there's a wooden um, 
a wooden clamp at the bottom and then a wooden peg that you twist once you get the umbrella up to the desired circumference. So I used it to wind up my self striping yarn. I weighed the balls so that they were mostly identical. One did, well now one's super smaller than the other because I've already knit a, butt, a bit out of it. But one ended up slightly smaller than the other because I wanted the color repeats to match up to try to get two matching socks. I actually last week filmed a video of me winding up the yarn into two identical balls, but <laughs> upon further review, it was so mind-numbingly boring that I couldn't possibly upload it because I couldn't even watch it in good conscience to edit it because it was just, I mean, it was so boring. <laughs> so you're welcome. <laughs> I saved you that trouble, but it is beautiful. Um, I love how it works. It's very, it turns very easily and um, I could not be happier. So I didn't get a ball winder because if I am choosing between knitting off of a yarn cake and a yarn ball, I'm going to pick a yarn ball every time. I don't know if it's just me or if I'm doing it wrong, which <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, there's a decent chance I'm doing it wrong. But when I knit out of a yarn cake, it sits flat and then I pull my yarn and I don't even pull from the center. Maybe I should, but I pull from the outside and I just get a ridiculous amount of twist in the yarn. You know, when you have a tape measure and it's all wound up and you pull it, it's all twisted when you pull it out because it just pulls up. I feel like that happens to my yarn. So if I use a yarn ball and it's kind of rolling around on the floor or rolling around on the couch next to me, it kind of minimizes that kind of twist. I still get some, but it's not infuriating, like I want to tear my hair out. Um, so I didn't get a ball winder and I just wind it by hand, which is still slow, but less painstaking as if I'm winding it myself over a chair or something. I have one more whip and then some future knitting that I want to talk to you about. So my last whip is kind of a sad little whip. My mom is amazing and she just started knitting. So I'm hoping that takes because then I'll have a real life person to talk about knitting with. But in the meantime, she said, you know, I would love it if you made me something. And I at first thought, oh no, I've never really made anything for anyone except hats for my little girls and that doesn't really count. I mean, they don't care. It could be, it could be made out of anything and they'd be like, but great, perfect. Um, but my mom really wanted a scarf. So I thought, okay, like I can make a scarf. Um, and she lives in upstate New York. My parents live in upstate New York and it's super cold there. But my mom herself is never cold. I mean, never in her whole life. She, they keep their house at 55. <laughs> Even in the winter, it's freezing there. Um, so she wanted a really light scarf. But we looked at a bunch of patterns and we picked out a yarn. It's this beautiful yarn. Um, hang on, I gotta look it up. It is Anzula Meridian in the colorway Emerald. It's a lace weight yarn, so thin. Um, and it's made out of 55% tensile, 35% alpaca, and 10% nylon. And it is really soft, but you guys, it is so, so thin. I didn't realize when I bought it how thin it was. I've never knit anything in lace weight. I mean, I've held lace weight double with fingering, but I've never knit in lace weight yarn all by itself. I can't say that I'm a fan. So first we picked out the Julie Hoover pattern called Tisse. It's a beautiful scarf pattern. I figured out how to do herringbone and I started knitting down and it was horrible. It was so horrible. I kept getting off in my stitch count, but there's more than a hundred stitches across and I never figured out that I was off until I got to the hundredth stitch. And then I had a tink back, but I couldn't read my knitting with the lace weight yarn because it was really open. It was really hard to read for me. I kept slipping off my needles and I know I'm supposed to use wooden needles with slipper yarn, but I didn't. <laughs> so um, finally, after ripping it out and starting over four or five times, I just told my mom, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't knit this scarf for you. It's too hard. I just, maybe next year or something. I don't know what the problem is. I can't do it. I never want to work on it. I hate it. So my mom is great. And she was like, oh my God, don't do something that is horrible. Pick, we'll pick something else. So we picked a different one. 
Um, it's still the same yarn because I do love that yarn. I mean, I don't love, I don't love the lace weightness of it, but I like the color and I don't think it's the yarn's fault. I think it's my fault. So we picked a different pattern that was much more simple and I'm hopeful that I'll be able to complete it. It's called Oceana by Janina Calio. And it's a just a simple rectangular scarf it's with some garter sections interspersed with some chevron lace, really simple lace, just eyelets, um, you know, in a chevron pattern, really not bad, even for me. <laughs> so I'm hopeful that I'll be able to complete this, uh, if only because half of it, truly half of it, if not more, is garter. So I mean, how much easier can it be? So that said, here is mine, and of course I'm in the middle of a row. <sighs> So it's not going to show that great, but use your imagination. It kind of looks like a cat chewed it because it hasn't been blocked because uh, I only knit a little bit, but I did. I'm on the second lace panel. You can a little bit see the eyelets. If I hold it up, ugh, this is very hard to show. If I hold it up, you might be able to see the eyelet pattern. There it is a little bit. So there's an eyelet pattern with the chevrons and then a garter panel, and then it just repeats again and again until it gets super long. It's very light, it's very airy. There's like a really open gauge. I didn't swatch because it's a scarf, who cares, who cares? Um, but I'm working on it. I'm using stitch markers so I don't get screwed up with even the simplest of ways. Lace is my nemesis, you guys. Um, but I'm working on that. I've only worked a little bit on it because it's such a challenge. I don't know, I'm hopeful. Maybe I'll have it by next Christmas. First, I was like, Mother's Day, I'll totally have it by Mother's Day. No, it will not. I will not even have it anywhere close to Mother's Day or summertime or maybe even fall. But maybe Christmas. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I'm working on that. So it was Shiana. Um, it's a lovely pattern. I just think it might be slightly out of my comfort zone. Um, and that is my last whip. All right, my only other knitting is future knitting. And I was going through my closet and I found a bunch of beautiful yarn and I rem then I remembered last year right around this time I bought enough yarn to make kind of a summer tea kind of in this um in the style of this you know something you could wear when it's kind of a transitional period or more summery so I bought some linen yarn this is Quince and Co Sparrow it's 100% organic linen in the in the colorway truffle which is just, it's just beautiful. I forgot how much I liked it. Um, it's 168 yards to 50 grams. And I have one, two, three, four, five. And I think there might be a sixth, a sixth floating around somewhere if I really go through my bags. Um, I think there was one that was separate. That's definitely enough for tea of some kind. And so my question is, what am I supposed to make with this? I have to make something. It's if I ever finish my no frill sweater, which hopefully, Fingers crossed the next two weeks, I should be able to knock that out. And I have plenty of time to make, I have no garments on the needle. So um, I'm in the market for a new summer tea. I was going through some of the summer teas that are available and I kind of narrowed it down. I've got the Rocket Tea by Tannis Fiber Arts, which I feel like everyone on earth has knit one, um, but I haven't. <laughs> That's fingering with um, mohair and it's kind of striped. I would have to get some kind of other yarn to go with it, which I'm not crazy about. I don't really want to buy more yarn right now, but I, I mean, I will. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. So maybe the Rocket Tee. Um, I could also, I thought maybe I could do, Isabel Kramer has a beautiful tee from, from years ago called the Edie Tee or the Eddie Tee. It's knit. I mean, the selling point for the Eddie T is that Sparrow is the recommended yarn, which just, I love. I'm still such a scaredy cat when it comes to subbing in yarns that anything that actually recommends this yarn is automatically like, ooh, maybe that. But it's a lovely, it's just top down, really simple. It's a V-neck, which gives me pause because every time I ever try to wear a V-neck, much less make a V-neck, it's always way too deep. And I'm like, that's my belly button. Um, so I don't know, I'm gonna have to go through the notes and see if there's a way to sort of tighten it up so that it's not too much of a V, because otherwise I'll never wear it, which would be extra sad. 
but it is recommended that you use Sparrow and that, that's what I've got. So maybe it, it's a simple top down and it's all over one color. It does have some kind of textured stripes. Not sure what's going on with those because I haven't bought the pattern, but some kind of texturing, um, not too much, just a few of them. And they said, uh, the pattern page said that the stripes were designed to combat the biasing that happens with this yarn, which I will, <laughs> I will attest to because I tried to swatch with this yarn last year. It was all coming back to me. I tried to swatch with this yarn for some unknown tea that I don't even remember. And it was all over the place. It was like slippy and it was like stretching in weird ways. And the stitches were really uneven and I had never seen anything like it. I'd only been knitting for like three months and I'm like, what? forget it, like forget it. So I kind of just threw it in a bag and forgot about it till just now. But I think that some of that would fix itself with blocking, <laughs> famous last words. But I also think that that's the biasing that they're talking about. And if I'd knit something that's designed to combat that with these stripes, that maybe it will work out, maybe. Um, so maybe the EDT by Isabel Kramer. And then there was one last one. It's called, hang on, I'm gonna, Look it up because I can't remember. It's called Pacific Rest. Pacific Rest by Janine Whale. This is kind of a newer pattern of hers. Um, I don't remember exactly when it was released, but it's pretty recently. And it's a top-down seamless tee with a lace panel right here and kind of an all-over lace pattern on the back, which makes me kind of nervous because you know me and lace. Well, maybe you don't, but my experience with lace has not been a positive one between the Magnolia pullover and my Oceana scarf that's like barely gotten off the ground. Um, I don't know, an all over lace panel on the back is kind of a lot for me, but I love the look of it. It's really, there's enough going on that it looks really interesting, but it's not too much. Since it's all one color, it kind of reads as a neutral and it's in the back, so it's not like it'd be weirdly see-through in the front. That always kind of bugs me when there's a lace panel in the front and you can see and there is some lace on the front but it's really it's high up on the on the front so i don't think it will bother me too much so maybe pacific rest i don't know i'm gonna think about this if you have any summer teas that you love or kind of tried and true knits that you keep going back to time and again or something you knit recently that you just love we'd love to hear about it in the comments um and that is it for knitting that's all I've got, you guys. I hope you're having a wonderful week. Thanks so much for sticking it out to the very end. If you are looking to find me, I'm on Instagram as Not Fancy Knitter. That's K-N-O-T, Fancy Knitter. And on Ravelry, also as Not Fancy Knitter, although I'm really bad at Ravelry. I put my project pages up, but I don't go on forums or do a lot of that stuff. But I am there if you want to reach out. Um, and that's it. I'll try to check in in a couple weeks or so. Hopefully my Hisho shawl is done, fingers crossed, and happy knitting. How about this? Let's get a hat. Is it too many hats?